Well, after an incredibly long, difficult week, it looks like we may actually get to go racing this evening. We're headed to Cincy Street Nights at Edgewater Sports Park. But before I get down there, I need to go get my nitrous bottle topped off for the Malibu. They've got 1150 index class down there tonight, and the Malibu <laughs> does not run 1150s on motor. Therefore, I will need to be using a little bit of nitrous to get through tonight's 1150 index class. So I jump into 64 and head to Jigs to get my bottle topped off, and then I head back to the house. But I need to stop and get some lunch first. I run up to Pataskala and go to my usual place. And this little guy right here just couldn't take his eyes off the truck as I'm pulling through the parking lot to Jersey Mike's. This young man back here works there every day and has worked there from the first day the store opened to become the manager. Anyway, when I got back to the shop, Kenny and Jeremy are hard at it working on the dually trying to get it finished up so we can use it to tow down there tonight. And then the UPS truck shows up with some shocks. My Viking dual adjustables for the Malibu showed up. But unfortunately, we didn't have time to put the shocks on before we left for Cincy Street Nights. So anyway, I throw my bottle in the Malibu, fire it up, and it's time to load this thing in the trailer. And my cohorts <laughs> are watching intently. June thinks she's about ready to miss a ride. Scrappy likes riding in cars, but not the Malibu. She keeps her distance from that thing. The Malibu looks incredibly good with the new RC comp wheels on it. I just can't wait to go race this thing tonight. Kenny's got my mirrors finished up on the dually and he starts helping me load everything in the trailer and Jeremy finishes up the dually. A few last minute items on the cooling system and the truck and trailer are loaded and ready to go. Once we made it to Edgewater, I found a decent pit spot, got everything set up, and then unloaded the Malibu. My hope is that I can go up and make maybe two or three motor passes and sort out some ignition timing issues before I try and spray the car. But first, I need to get my tech card filled out and run the car through tech. After that, I went ahead and made a couple motor passes and then made my first nitrous hit. Now, I let the car leave on motor and you can hear me grab the nitrous about 30 feet out. I'm trying to be gentle on this little 10 bolt rear end. All right guys, so we're down here at Edgewater. I made a couple licks on the car and more disappointment i mean some disappointment the dogs are in there raising hell sorry about that um i turned the timing up on it and it did feel better i thought it ran a lot better and it didn't it, it picked up a tenth um i turned the timing back where it was slowed down a tenth so i don't know guys that thing just doesn't make any power i didn't build that engine i'm not sure what the situation is in it but it just doesn't run like it should uh, I may end up just taking that short block out and putting another short block in it with a different camshaft or something because to have all those nice parts in it and only go 1250s, that's just not acceptable to me. <laughs> so I may have to dig into this thing a little deeper than just tuning. But we're entered in 1150 class. I made a nitrous kit pass and it went 1168 or 1169. 116 miles an hour so i'm in there i'm pretty close it was a it was 180 185 degrees maybe 190 when i made that lick so if i go up here with the engine cold it'd probably go to 1150 so we'll see what happens up until this point i'd been pretty busy and didn't have time to talk to anybody but now i've got a few minutes your teacher eats grapes. No. Is that what you said? No, we let his teacher. Mrs. Graves. Oh, Mrs. Graves. Mrs. Okay. Graves. So she, she eats grapes. <laughs> okay, so your English is a little broken. What are you telling this kid? I said you'll be arguing with a woman your whole life. <laughs> if you 
tell them to call 911 because some turkey just stole your truck, guess what they're going to do? Anything but. <laughs> Now keep in mind, this thing has never run 1150 in its life. All right, guys, so we're up here for first round, 1150 index. I got this beautiful Z28 Camaro over here, big tire car. We'll see what happens. I'm going to give it my best shot. We'll find out. Just before I had headed to the staging lanes, I had made a couple last minute changes to the ignition timing on the Malibu. I'm basically taking a shot in the dark and have no idea what this car is about to run. Hopefully close to 1150 but I know to have any chance at it, I've got to hit that nitrous as soon as I put my foot on the floor. Grabbing the nitrous as soon as I hit the gas nets me an incredibly fast 60 foot. I'm way out on this Camaro and I'm thinking there's no possible way this car will go faster than 1150. I was wrong. The Malibu actually pulls the front wheels when it leaves. The Malibu clicks off a 149 60 foot and 1139 at 112 miles an hour, letting out of the gas, trying to keep from breaking out. So that ends my Friday night. But I stay the night and get up Saturday morning to a whole new day and a whole new race. So I start my new day off with a little bit of Frisbee time with the dogs. As I'm out there playing with them, I throw that Frisbee and I look over and I see a trailer in a motorhome. Well, 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 guess who that is? Mr. Brad Eglian, B-Rad from Street Outlaws No Prep Kings. He's a good buddy of mine. So I decide to take the dogs down and go visit B-Rad for a few minutes, but I know he's busy sorting out his new combination. So I head back to the trailer, unload the Malibu, and my two cohorts are waiting for their next orders. Unfortunately, they're not much help with cleaning up the car but I wanted to get the windows cleaned up and get the car wiped off from where it got rained on last night. And then I decide the dogs need to go for a little exercise. Well, Scrappy gets a little exercise. June's more of a rider. It had rained quite a bit last night, but the pits are mostly dry. And thankfully the dogs aren't tracking much mud in the trailer when they come in and out. Anyway, me and the dogs go up the starting line and I catch a Sneak peek of the track sprayer. That's something I'm not used to seeing very often anymore. Track looks pretty decent. Not much wind. Partly cloudy. Should be a pretty decent day today. Although the wind definitely picks up later. I put the dogs back in the trailer and turned on the television, put on one of my favorite movies, and hang out in the trailer with them until it's time to fire up the car and head up to tech. Once I get my run card, I head back to the pits and run into one of my buddies, Dave Cook from Indiana. I love that dually. Anyway, I go back to the trailer and start looking at my gauges to see what the air is like today. And according to the barometer, it should be relatively fast. All right, guys, we're going up for first time trial today in Sportsman. Uh, made a couple little changes to the car. Obviously, we've turned the timing up a little bit. That seemed to work really well last night. Uh, but I've also removed one of the return springs on the carburetor, the throttle return springs, uh, to take a little bit of pressure off the throttle cable and make it easier for me to get the throttle down a little bit faster uh, to help increase or decrease my reaction time, I hope. Uh, the other thing is I've run the tire pressure up a little bit today. Bracket racing, they prep the track. Usually it's pretty decent. Uh, I've run the tires a little bit low because this car doesn't have literally any shocks on it. I mean, it's basically got the original stock shocks. So we run the tire pressure up a little bit. We've taken a little bit of throttle return spring off of it. Just real simple little things that you can do to help uh, decrease your reaction time, make the car react a little faster. And uh, we'll go up here and see what it does. first burnout of the day felt really good. The car sounds nice and crisp. The throttle feels much better, much easier to push the throttle down on the floor, and much more responsive. So, I roll up the starting line very carefully, bump in the top bulb, bring it up on the converter, wiggle it into the beams, and crack the throttle on the last yellow. Ok, 
Okay, so first time shot felt really good. Um, I'm not so sure that I don't still have an issue with the carburetor that it didn't stumble, but I've taken some jet out of the secondaries and I feel like it's nosing over at the top of each gear just a little bit. So I don't have everything I need to put the jets back here with me today, I don't think. I'm not going to mess with it today, but uh, I think I'm going to probably put the jet back in the back end of it. Uh, reaction time was really good. I felt like I hit it good. The throttle pedal felt really good. Uh, I couldn't see what it was on the board, but I feel like it was pretty decent. We'll see here in just a second. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Very good. I had a 016 reaction time, so 16 thousandths of a second after the green light came on. My front tires cleared the beams. So 16 thou reaction time is very, very good off the bottom ball. Uh, we had a 172 60 foot. That's very good for this car. Uh, and we went 1249 at 107 miles an hour. So that's a really good pass for the Malibu uh, with the air today and uh, a little bit windy. You know, a little wind out here today. So we're not going to set any records today. Uh, however, that was one of the fastest passes this car's made so far on motor. So, looking good. 16th out reaction, 1249.7. That's where we're at. See how things go today. After a really good start to the day, everything turned south in a hurry when I took the car up for round two of time trials. Dave Cook comes up and knocks on the door and says, Hey man, your right rear tire looks like it's really low. And he's right. It's leaking air. The valve stems loose or leaking for some reason. I feared that I had a screw in the tire, but when I got back to the trailer, I verified that the valve stem was leaking and it just so happens that Brad Eglian's boy had everything I needed to tighten up the valve stem and pump the tire back up. All right, guys. <laughs> I missed my time trial of Sportsman, so I'm going to run up there and run one with Super Pro and uh, Hopefully our day gets a little better. Luckily, Brad Eglian was here today. His boy loaned me some tools and an air compressor. Got me taken care of, so thank you, buddy. I appreciate you very much. I was thinking maybe I was going home early and wasn't gonna get to race the rest of the day, but I think we're gonna be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and make my second time shot. We'll see how things go. It's not my day. I've had days like this before when I don't give up. And I usually, I usually end up going home a winter. We'll see what happens today. It's been a long time since I've won a race, man. It's been a long time since I've competitively raced anything. I'm just here to have fun, see some friends, hang out, go home with my dogs, eat dinner, and I'll be happy. So with my valve core issue resolved, I head up the staging lanes to make a time trial with Pro Class. And hopefully, my luck turns around. I light the top bulb in my lane, bring the engine up to about 2,000 RPM on the foot brake, and then bump the car in carefully and prepare for the tree to fire. As soon as I hit the gas, it slipped the tire, as evidenced by the input to the steering wheel as soon as the car left the starting line. That definitely affected my 60 foot time, but more importantly, my reaction time. So that wasn't a very good hit. Uh, I felt like when it came out of the burnout box, it wasn't spinning both rear tires. Uh, I think the right rear was still wet when I staged it, to be honest with you. And you'll have that sometimes with a car that doesn't have a, a spool in it. This has got a pausing unit. It would come out of the water box if one tire is a little bit wetter than the other one. It'll spin one tire, not the other. So, when I went up there and staged the car, I hit the gas and I could feel the right rear tire spin. It affected my reaction time, definitely affected my 60 foot. Not good. Not good at all. We'll see what the time slip says, but I'm certain it's not good. Thanks, buddy. The uh, 60 foot was... 173.8. It's not as bad as I thought. My reaction time was 
Isuzu 62, also not as bad as I thought. But the car has slowed down to a 1259 at 105. That's not good. And I noticed when I stuck it in high gear, it just laid there. It just didn't run like it should. And I think it's probably got something to do with the jetting. I think I need to put those jets back in the back of the carburetor. So you can't bracket race the car like it is. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And uh, that's what we're here for. We're here to figure things out. You know, you're not going to just jump into something and take off and set the world on fire. You know, you're going to have highs and lows. You're going to have times where you think you got it made and the other, you know, you come back up and you got a flat tire and tire spins. It is what it is. You know, you just got to work through it. So looking at the time slips here, the 60 foot was off a little bit, which I felt it spin. Uh, we lost three by the eighth. So 791.2 to 794.7. But most importantly, we lost mile an hour, 86 to 85. And by the end of the quarter mile, I'm down two miles an hour. And like I said, I could feel it laying there like it's not running. Now I don't have a fuel pressure gauge on this car. It's just a mechanical pump and the gas gauge doesn't work very well. This actually may be a situation where we're running the tank a little bit low on fuel. So rather than change jets today, I'm just gonna go ahead and see if I can't go find a little bit of race gas, put a little bit more fuel in the tank and uh, see if that takes care of the problem. So luckily, Edgewater Sports Park sells race gas right there at the track. So I take a five gallon can over get some race gas, put it in the tank, and crack the nitrous bottle and prepare for round one. All right, guys, so made it up here for first round. The wind has picked up substantially from this morning. Uh, there's a pretty strong headwind. Um, I went ahead and dialed the car 1250. Uh, I think it can run that without any nitrous, but I guarantee you I can cover that 1250 here what have I got it looks like I've got a little Dodge Dart Swinger I think he's dialed 1235 so it'll be a fairly close race I'm in the left hand lane it looks like that car's been raced for a while you know it doesn't look like it's a total newbie or anything I'm sure he knows what he's doing so I look for it to be a pretty decent race I'll do the best I can with what I got and uh, we'll see how things look when we get to the finish line uh, I'm leaving first, he'll have to run me down. So if he's all over me early in the run, I'll jump on that nitrous and I'll take him down there and turn him loose. Uh, if he can't get to me, then I'll drive the best I can and make it as tight as I can. If I'm out on him and he can't catch me, I'll be looking for him to drop his nose at the first cone down there. Because that's what I would do if I was chasing somebody and I couldn't catch him. I'd drop them on their head at the finish line, keep from going out, you know, breaking out. So one or the other is going to happen. Either he's going to be chasing me down and catch me early, or he's not going to be able to get to me and I'll be backing into him looking for the drop. See how it goes. Once again, the car slips the tires as it leaves. I click second gear and I notice that the car in the other lane is way out ahead of me. I go to spray it, but I had forgotten to turn the nitrous kit on. I almost screwed this whole deal up. Well, I won that round, but I did not actually win that race. That boy lost it. I felt like I hit the tree decent, but it slipped a tire a little bit when it left. And uh, I think that probably affected my reaction time a little bit. Um, I don't really know what the ET was doing. I wasn't concentrating on how the car felt so much as I was watching him drive out of my life. At, at 300 feet, he'd already caught me and he was driving away from me. And I went to grab the nitrous and I had forgot to arm the daggone thing. So I quickly reached down to arm the nitrous and grabbed it just the time he was starting to back into me and trying to tighten it up. And he really kind of, he kind of fouled that deal up. I didn't win that, he lost it. I'm 64 up front, he's 008. My man's double, remember what I told you? I said it looks like he's raced a while. My man's 008 up front, and I'm 064. I'm math 
mathematically ineligible at the, at the reaction time. I mean, it should be over. Uh, he's dialed 1235. He goes 1249 at 95 miles an hour letting off of it down there. I can't get there. You know, I'm uh, grabbing the nitrous down there and come around him. 1257 7 on a 1250 dial at 107 miles an hour. There's something wrong with the car and I'm not sure exactly what it is. Uh, I'm hearing a little bit of chatter in the valve train. I heard that going up there. And it's always had one lifter that ticks until it warms up. But I feel like I'm starting to see a problem here. Maybe this might have something to do with why the car doesn't perform like I think it should. But anyway, I didn't win that round. My man over there, he just got caught trying to make it too tight and wasn't prepared, wasn't prepared for me to spray him down there. I just come around him with a bunch of mile an hour. I was going 107. He went 95. He was backing into me. He did everything he should have done, but he just wasn't prepared for me to come spraying around him down there like that. Boys and girls, I would never, ever, ever advise anyone to go bracket racing without a hot nitrous bottle. That's your tip of the day. So when I get back to the trailer, I wipe off part of my dial in because I'm really not sure what I'm going to dial for the next round. I'm concerned about this valve train noise, but after checking the car, it sounds fine. I don't know guys, the engine sounds okay. It's always got a little bit of lifter noise. I'm going to look into that this week. Uh, I think it needs to have the valves gone through. Uh, but anyway, uh, to be honest with you, I think it was probably the wind that affected that run. The wind has picked up substantially and it's picked up so much right now that I couldn't even hardly open the door of the trailer to get out here a second ago. So we're just going to have to uh, make sure the nitro system is armed uh, and just do the best we can for the rest of the day. No matter what, I'm having a great time. I'm happy to be here. Uh, and hopefully maybe some of this will translate to some of you guys out there that would like to get into a, um, a little bit of drag racing, you know, to get started in a bare bones, ground floor level racing operation with a street car. All right, guys, so we're up here for round two of Sportsman. And I noticed there's an abundance of cars in the right lane and nobody pulling in the left. And I think I figured out why. <laughs> this, this old boy here in this orange uh, Barracuda, he's pretty tough. And uh, I ain't never backed down from a challenge. Uh, that's okay. He's a good old boy. He's he's raced a long time. Uh, he's definitely deserving of some of my hijinks. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have my hands full. He's dialed 1032 uh, and I'm dialed 12.59. So, I'm going to get a head start. He's going to have to run me down. And I have the left lane, which is the lane I prefer to be run down in, because I can just look right over my right-hand shoulder. Uh, once I stick this car in high gear, you're probably going to see me looking over my right shoulder and grabbing the spray. If he's all over me or if he's getting too close, he's going to get sprayed and dumped. Uh, if he can't get to me, which I doubt that's going to be a situation that happens, but if he can't get to me, I'll be waiting for him to drop me down there. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, we're going to give you a little different view. He should be coming up over my right-hand shoulder down there at the finish line. So I've put my phone up on the windshield, angled to the right. So hopefully you'll be able to get a, a shot of what's going on here as I drive the finish line. Now, normally this wouldn't be uh, something somebody looks forward to, but back in the day when I used to race my Nova, I was always a slower car and I was always getting chased down. Uh, I prefer, if I'm being chased down, I prefer to be in the left-hand lane because I can look over my shoulder easily and see my opponent coming up behind me. If I was in the right-hand lane looking over my left shoulder, he's in my blind spot, and that's exactly where that little Dodge Dart Swinger was the last round, and that's part of the reason he got himself in so much trouble. So we'll see if we can pull off a miracle here because that's about what it's going to take for me to get through this round. Because this old boy's tough, nothing but respect to him, but uh, I'd like to have my crack at him. We'll see what happens. Real nice burnout. Got a little sun in my eyes here, that's a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and purge the 
the nitrous through the motor here a little bit. Make sure we're good to go. Oil pressure looks good. Water temperature looks good. Works through the motor sounds good. So we'll see what happens. I'll be leaving first. Bring her up on the converter a little bit. Wiggle her in. I'm in. that I was way slow uh, 60 foot is way off 180 60 foot I'm six or seven slow in the 60 and uh, that translated to almost 600 slow at the eighth I was way slow so what I saw was him coming and he was definitely gonna be there because he had me on the tree a little bit plus I was six six slow to begin with so what I saw was correct. He was definitely coming. He was definitely going to get there. I did the right thing in spraying it uh, when I did. Uh, however, uh, he had me on a tree. He had me, hang on a second, buddy, I'm working. Uh, however, I was, uh, where was I? Hang on. So I saw him coming and what I saw was correct. What I translated from my view was correct. Um, he was definitely going to get there. I sprayed him. I cut him loose. But unfortunately, with the reaction time disadvantage I had, there was nothing I was going to do. I did. I got it close. Uh, he was under by three thou. <laughs> he was under by. Yeah. He was under by three thou. And I was under by quite a bit more. I was under by uh, four, four hundreds. He was under by three thou. So um, it's just one of those things, you know. I'm I'm learning the car. Uh, it's been a while since I've raced, uh, and it's been a long time since I've bracket raced and used nitrous and finish line drove and all that. So I'm a little rusty. 
but I did see what I thought I saw. Um, and I did the right thing. I just, uh, I, I drove too close to the finish line before I got on the brakes. That's all there is to it. Uh, I almost pulled that off. He was under by three thou. If I could have backed up on him a little earlier and kept myself from going under, I would have won that round. Uh, because I, unless he could, I mean, he could have caught my dump. He could have caught me hitting the brakes and got out of it. But I drove it so deep and cut so hard that just tough. You know, I did the right thing, but I just, I just drove too close to the finish line before I got on the brakes. I'm just not used to this car and these brakes yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. I think I got a test and tune session coming up next weekend. I might take a car and go a little, do a little testing, private testing, and maybe see if we can't get this thing dialed in a little bit better. And I got those new shocks ready to go on. So let's head home. Merchandise is available online at theoldmansgarage.shop.